Hello everyone, so today's topic is uh, asking forgiveness from God or God's forgiveness and uh, we will visit it, we've been talking about uh, ego-centered uh, uh, steps to become more God-centered, we talked about four steps, uh, we, uh, uh, the path of spiritual poverty, the last two weeks we've been discussing this, uh, today we want to talk about something very important in our path, in our path to be closer to our Creator, and that is uh, forgiveness of God. It's very, very important, uh, maybe the mo one of the most important things. Uh, but without further ado, we can just get started. I want to use the same uh, uh, example that I used last week, uh, uh, and that was the example related to uh, this column uh, and if we have this column which is opaque and there is sun what will happen is there will be a shadow uh, so this shadow uh, is related to how opaque is this column and the more this column becomes transparent the less shadow there will be if it becomes very transparent it will become like a glass so a, a glass of co a glass column won't have any shadow, or almost no shadow, in a way, uh, as in this case. So we want to, we said that last week, when we assume that, using this analogy, when we assume that this column is our I, i -ness, I am great, I am a super person, and when we think of this I that we talk about all the time, separate from our creator, it means that uh, everything that we have, we have it because of ourselves. It's not coming as a gift from our Creator. Then uh, this independent experience or independent existence, seeing, the, uh, uh, seeing our life is ba depends on us. It's us. It's not coming as a gift. My power is not coming as a gift. My intelligence is not coming as a gift. So... <clears throat> Uh, with this assumption, a shadow occurs in our life. That's uh, inevitable. This shadow is the shadow of fear, because if I am the one who possesses all these, then I have fear of letting go. I have uh, always anxiety. I have uh, uh, lots of responsibility. Responsibility, not in the sense of, you know, we all need to be responsible of what we do, but responsibility of my life it's a very heavy burden whereas when if we realize that actually my life is a gift that is given to me then we we feel we are empowered by the one who we are dependent on rather than uh, feeling that we need to take care but he is taking care uh, come on in uh, welcome yeah uh, welcome welcome uh, uh, so this is really the ego-centered uh, uh, view. And it happens when we cut our relationship. We forget that we are servants of our Creator. Uh, and when we forget and we behave as if there is no Creator, then problems come with it. So without going through what we talked about last week, I want to tie this to our today's topic, which is asking for forgiveness. And I want to start this topic uh, using one saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he says that if you utter these words, of course, on meaning them, I ask forgiveness from God, the magnificent, the one, there, that there is no God but He, the ever-living, the sustainer of all existence. And I turn to Him in repentance. All of the, your sins will be forgiven, basically. That's a saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We want to study this saying and many other th sayings that we will talk about using the same uh, analogy that we used last week. So what is happening here? What is happening? Why, why, uh, I'm asking forgiveness from God, 
But I am reminding myself in this prayer who God is. And recognizing who God is is the key here. Basically, if we use this example, we are reminding ourselves that this I that I think to be independent is actually not independent. I am turning to the ever-living sustainer of existence, the one who is sustaining me right now. I am turning towards him. So suddenly, I am, I am just recognizing that the darkness I've been living in, in through my life, that darkness was because I forgot of the reality that there is an ever-present one, ever-present creator that sustains me. The moment I remember this, what is happening is, I am back to the uh, reco uh, to recognize what is real in life that the creator is creating everything every moment so so this this turning and remembering is really becoming aware again of what of the timeless reality of life that there is a creator who everything i see is nothing but reflecting his divine attributes. So this, I, it, it is like I was in a nightmare. And in this nightmare, I felt lonely. I was in this darkness. I was feeling hopeless. I was feeling despair. And I'm suddenly, so forgiveness here, what I'm trying to say is remembering. I'm remembering a nightmare. God is here and God is alive. And this, this reality, the Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is saying that wipes out everything. Because that shadow disappears. Because you remembered once again the reality of life. We'll continue on this. So, because it's very powerful if we realize it. The problem, we don't utilize the power of forgiveness because maybe we don't, we don't realize how powerful it is. So, I want to, I mean, specifically uh, uh, this prayer and, and couple, one other that I want to use here is how it is taught. Why? Well, I'm asking just for forgiveness. And, but here, I'm saying, God, you are the magnificent, the ever-living, the sustainer. What is happening now? I am bringing to my mind and my heart and my life again, reminding myself what this life is again. I'm turning on the lights, basically. Or I'm opening my eyes. I was in darkness because my eyes were, uh, were shut, right? My eyes are shut. Is it how, is it how we say it? So, so this, what I'm doing here, I'm saying basically, I am inviting the light again to my life. And that light is that this is not a place of despair. This is not a place of loneliness. This is not a place of I am just by myself. It is actually a place where everything, everything is being sustained at this very moment by the Creator. We are in the... If we, if we want to use an analogy, like in the womb of the compassion and love of the Creator, of the One. And because we are forgetting this, we go in different directions. So asking for forgiveness is nothing but remembering this. Now someone might tell me, so what do, what do you mean here? I mean, this sounds, very, this sounds very easy. Like we do all these bad things. And... We are living a very bad life and we are full of guilt why we are living this life. And then we just remember that God is, uh, uh, equal, and then it's done. Is it how easy it is? I won't say it. I want God to, you know, I want to use a couple of sayings because 
Because the problem, because we don't believe in it, it doesn't happen. This is our problem. We don't believe because the problem is we don't know who God, you know, not, uh, let's say it again. We underestimate sometimes who our creator is. That's the problem. That's why this, this miracle is not happening. It's actually a miracle that can happen every moment. And another saying, uh, actually, let me bring this. Uh, yes. It's, it says this actually. No, read, oh, read it in Arabic. Astaghfirullah al Azim, Aladi la ilaha illa huwa, Al Hayu al Qayyum, wa atubu ilay. Very welcome. So, so, what we are doing here, we are turning away from the illusion of independent entity. And all our sins, whatever you want to put there, but it's really forgetting that we are servants of our Creator and, and, and living a life as if we are independent from our Creator and we can do whatever we want with our body, with our mind, with our thinking. We can be mean, we can be this and that. Why? Because these are my qualities. But when I'm turning from the illusion that I am an independent entity and recognizing that, no, I am just a servant of God. And let's connect this to it last week. I am nothing but, and this is nothing but the creation of God. It, does, it has nothing to do with someone that thinks he's Omar and he is a great person. I mean, that is my illusion. I mean, yes, for practical reasons, I need to, I, we call this a person, but we call a person doesn't mean that this person owns the qualities that I have. No, all these qualities that I have are coming from my creator. So my name, uh, it doesn't make, give me the, the uh, uh, right to claim ownership over myself. I don't own myself. I don't own it. You know, not, not just me, everyone. We don't own, this is our reality. The tree doesn't own its apples. It's a creation of God. And the apples are a gift from God. Life of the tree is a gift from God. Can I see my life as a gift from my creator? Then how can I claim ownership over myself? I cannot. I am a servant of the creator. So what can I do? I can be in endless gratitude of the one that is bestowing or giving all these gifts on me, really. Really, it's... I didn't choose anything. It's all gifts. It's all uh, grace. So when we remember this, what is happening, we are remembering again that everything is God's. We are remembering the presence of God, that God has never left us. We thought he left us because we... Close our eyes. That's our problem. And when we take credit for the things going on, and we focus on, oh, I made this happen, or I'm sorry, and then the shadow gets. Exactly. Because when I get credit for the things that I do, where is God in the picture? Well, it's my credit. But if I realize that God, it's God's credit, what happens at that moment? You feel the love of God how God is allowing you to do it. So all the credit becomes God's credit. And we are just the one who is enjoying the right. You know, actually, we, we, we are created to enjoy the right. It's a wonderful right. The problem is we don't like it that way sometimes, you know, or, or this comes into the way. It says, no, you know, it has to be my right. Say, it's a right that you enjoy. Why do you want to say to claim it, because it's a lot of responsibility. Are you sure? Say, yes, I'm sure I want it. You want it all because it comes with a shadow. Why? Because, because if I think I am the one who governs my life, really everything in it, think about it. I am responsible of my past, of my future. Now today what we want to talk about, asking for forgiveness frees us from the heavy burden of the past frees us from many guilts because we keep li living in these cycles 
Oh, I wish I didn't do that. But God is telling me he is ready to forgive that. It's me that is not ready to forgive it. That's the problem. That's why I keep living the same thing and again and again and again. Yeah. That's very true. You know, I think this is a major problem. We beat ourselves up. You know, we say, why did I do this? You know, why do I do this? See? You know. But you know, sometimes too, I think that everything's for a reason, everything's for a purpose. Sure. You know, and sometimes by our mistakes, you know, we have, we learn important lessons. Wonderful. And if we realize that, then the mistakes become other, you know, other gifts from God. So nothing is, nothing, everything was worth living and everything was coming from the loving creator. Yeah, yes. And that's what we do. We lose hope that God will forgive us. That's why we live in the burden of our mistakes. And we become walking, people walking, but it's all about what we did in the past. We cannot live the present moment because we are not ready. We are, we are not present for the present moment because we live in the past. We are just angry. I'm so angry at myself about something I did 10 years ago. That's, that's what we do. Why? I can't forgive myself. But God is ready to forgive you. This is the problem. We don't want to uh, realize, I mean, basically, we are not recognizing that, that, uh, who the creator is. Who the creator is, who the loving one, the compassionate one is. And that's why it's it becomes dark again. It's dark, dark, dark. We feel dark. So so um, so here what is when we say God is the Nuru Samawati wal are the light of the heavens and the earth. We are, if we want to use the same analogy opening our eyes to the light of the heavens and the earth. That's it. So, does it matter how dark the room is? Let's say the room is so dark, there is not even a bit of light. Does it matter for the light when you turn on the light? Will it still, uh, will it still, be, uh, will it still be light if we turn on the light or not? Even if the room is black from darkness? It still will be light, right? When we turn on the light, when we open the curtains, does it matter how, how dark the room is? Oh, you know, my sins are so big, you don't know. God, I mean, I, I, God won't forgive me. Does it matter how dark it is? It's the nature of the light to overcome, overcome the, dark. the darkness. We hang on to the dark. That's our problem because the ego. Because the ego realizes if forgiveness is that easy, there will be no reason for it to live. So it holds on into the shadow because it realizes if the shadow decreases, I will go away. I don't want to go away. I want to have a story. What is my story? Hi, how are you? What's my story? I have a big story, you know. What is my story? It is all about my history. You say, you can let it go. You can all give it back to God. What do you mean? What do you mean it's my story? 
I need to live with it. See, I don't want to let it go. I don't want to open to the, to the becoming baby, like a baby again. That's what servant of God means. Nothing. I have nothing. I am just servant of God. Oh, but you make mistakes. Yes, servant of God makes mistakes. And I come back to God. So see, you become like a baby again. You fed. That doesn't mean, oh, so it's so easy. I will just do whatever I want and come back to God. It, it, it doesn't work that way. Because when I change my mind this way, the propensity to, to go to darkness will decrease. And the propensity to go to light will increase in my life. Um, so, no... Uh, uh, so, sin, in a way, we can say forgetting that we are servants of God, if we want to generalize, in, in a way. So it is living in this illusion and, and in this darkness. And the biggest illusion, the biggest illusion is that we assume that our partners to God. What do I mean by this? Because we've been talking about oneness, 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 right? God is one. All the qualities are His. We are not even possessing the qualities. When we say that, but it is my past, then we are giving power to my past. We are giving power to our past. We are saying God won't forgive, forget, forgive me. We are saying basically that whatever I've done has so much power that God's power cannot overcome. That God's forgiveness is not, won't be able to overcome all my bad. That's what we are saying when we don't believe that God is able to forgive me. So it's not about humility to say God won't forgive me. It's actually not recognizing real humility, which is to recognize who God is. Yes, pardon. I think also, too, that because God is perfect and we are not, mm -hmm. and yet we have this illusion that we need to be perfect also to be But that's, that's not part of God's creation, you know? Yeah. And so we are, when we have this ideology, we have to be perfect, then that's, that's what, what assuming, you know, partners, you know. Exactly. And how, how freeing it is, like we talked last week, to say, I am not perfect, I am, I can make mistakes. How freeing, I mean, I, I feel like, it's like, <laughs> you are getting so much relief. You know, I can make mistakes. Alhamdulillah, and there is someone who will listen and who will forgive me. That's so wonderful, so powerful. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I was reading a book today, and the exact phrase was almost exactly what you have up there that I was reading. It said, sin is forgetting that we are created and created for God. Mm -hmm. And that is so powerful. Yeah. And that's what we with the illusion that we would be perfect because only he is perfect. Subhanallah. But when we realize we're creations of him, we can work toward being more like yes. him. Yes. More perfect, but we'll never be perfect. Be because in realizing our imperfection, mm -hmm. his perfection will be seen on us. It will become like the mirror. Opposite of it will show his, his, uh, his uh, glory. Yes, yes. Wonderful point. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know who the forgiver is. See, because if I don't, if I don't have the ability to, my, so that's why I, I can reflect that, that quality can be reflected on me too because of my mistake. Uh, 
It doesn't mean, okay, I need to run and do it. No, it's my nature. I, I do it. But, but, but to recognize that there is someone that forgives, I need to have some potential that would be imperfect, as, as, as was said. Yeah. Not only ourselves, we sometimes don't forget us, forgive ourselves, but each other. Mm. I mean, in your close knit group, you may be expecting perfection from your neighbor, your friend, your spouse, and we have to remember that when we're uh, reflecting to each other too. Yes. Sometimes we, we not only are holding ourselves to a high standard, we're holding those around us. Too. Yes. Which can be detrimental to that yes. friendship or that. That's a, a wonderful reminder. Thank you. Um, so uh, here, uh, Prophet Muhammad is saying uh, that God said, O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall forgive you for what you have done, and I shall not mind. So, so long as you come, I shall not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky, and were you then to ask forgiveness of me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, were you to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me, ascribing no partner to me, I would bring you forgiveness nearly as great as it. So, very powerful, right? Very powerful uh, 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 and there are so many keys here. When we face God, recognizing that, God, you are the one who forgives. And we are turning in this direction with this understanding, recognizing the magnificence of the Creator, the, the uh, infinite compassion and mercy of the Creator. Then, We are in the present moment again, the present moment of recognizing the ever-present reality. Illusions have no power. Illusions go away. We are the ones who give power to our illusions by, uh, by our illusions. I mean, we are the ones who think so, so much about our, oh, but I did this and this and this and this. Well, there's always a reset button. There's always a reset button. Uh, no, I don't want to believe that. It's not, it's, it shouldn't be that easy. Why? Because I did this. I mean, why do we want to live in our shadow? We're so used to. I mean, think about it. Oh, Alhamdulillah, I, I feel so relieved. That's, is it that easy? It can be. But we sometimes are not ready. Because uh, despair sometimes becomes uh, a style of life. I need to, when you ask me, how are you? It, I become so accustomed to just tell you how bad I am and how down I am and how depressed I am. I mean, this is, if I am used to this, I mean, we are saying, oh, this might all change. I am not ready to let it go. I mean, this is now my lifestyle. It's about, oh, you know, I was born in the wrong time by the wrong mother in the wrong city and everything in my life went wrong so there's no hope in me okay that's a great story well, you can change it no no you don't see i'm so used to uh, so yeah uh, so this guilt sometimes we don't let it want to let it go yes i can feel guilty because I did something wrong and there is a way I can go back to God and free, be free of it. So there is no guilt anymore on my back because there is a creator that forgives. But if I just want to keep, keep it there, then I am just so heavy all the time with this. Sometimes it's shame and shame that is so inside of me that almost I think everybody who sees me he thinks I'm not even a human being, you know, because of all the shame. That's how I think of myself. Oh, you know, they will 
us how bad I am because I'm so bad. But God is saying, no, you are... I am here opening my arms to you. Just turn on. Just come. And then you'll be clean. Clean, no, nothing. No blemishes. Really? I don't want to believe I say it sometimes, right? So we don't want to... Basically, as we said, we're saying, God, your light cannot really wipe my darkness. It's not about humility. It's, not, it's really about not recognizing who God is. God's light can wipe any darkness. And that is the miracle. It's the miracle of faith, of recognizing who God is. Sometimes we say, oh, you know, I just believe in God. I don't know. I mean, people say their life changed. My life is not really changing because we live intellectually. We think faith is intellectual. Faith is not an intellectual endeavor. We can talk about it intellectually. It is in my heart to recognize that God is accepting me, is opening my, his, his uh, uh, comp uh, embracing me. He's embracing me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then we feel what? We feel empowered. Not be, through our ego. We feel empowered because of our creator. They say, oh, you know, wow. Then people say, what's going on with this guy? I also believe in God. I don't feel any excitement. Well, maybe because we didn't realize the change that God can bring to our lives. The, 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 my dark pa past, the, it doesn't have any power. It's my illusion. And power of God can wipe it all. Wipe it all. And nobody can come and say anything to you, to me. Oh, but you did this and that. If we look back at the example of the prophets, all the prophets, example from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, look at his companions. Did he kept reminding them of the bad things they've done before? Oh, you know, you buried your child when, he, when they were alive. No, they realized and they, they came back to God and then they started living a clear, a living ahead, the present moment, recognizing who God is, every moment. If, but if I, if I, if I, I said, you are not, you're not good enough. I want to come to God. You're not good enough. You did so bad. Who, who would be, who would come to faith, right? <laughs> Nobody, right? I mean, so, so this is, but we do it sometimes, right? Look, look at this person. Somebody comes in anywhere and we look with ju judgmental eyes. Even if we don't look with eyes, we have so of a ju big judgmental thinking that the air becomes almost judgmental. That there is no like a, 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 a normal conversation because everybody is so, because we are just judging. Why are you judging? God is not judging. I mean, why are we embracing like God wants to embrace everyone? Uh, and here, one, wonderfully, a, a verse in the Quran, in close translation, so say, O oh my servants, who have transgressed against their own selves. That's what we are doing. We are transgressing against ourselves by believing in our illusions and thinking we have nowhere to go and thinking we are by ourselves and we have to do it all ourselves. He says, despair not of God's mercy. Come. Surely God forgives all sins. And this is a verse. Oh, no, 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 but not my sin. Well, which sin? Which one? Which darkness can't be wiped by the light? Which darkness? Truly, he is oft forgiving, most merciful. So we need not to let our past for, govern our future. In, the, in a bad sense, I mean, of course, we learn from our past, and our past, in a way, is, is, is teaching us. But what I'm trying to say here, we need not, you know, our sin or bad things always be like a stigma on us, and then we are just, we can't, we can't go past it. It's just a stigma. You know, who are you? I am the one who did this this time, and that's it, and I'm living with this. It's almost like I am... I am uh, uh, doing what? Stuck. Carrying it. Stuck. 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 Yes. I have a question. Yes. And I really don't know, and I'm not throwing this out because I know this is correct. I really want to hear what you think about that. Why is it that sometimes we do something we regret, 
And we know that God forgives us. But why is it we can't forgive ourselves sometimes? Even when we know God forgives us. It's a big question. Uh, uh, and uh, just what came to my mind now is... Uh, because we sometimes have a, a very big ego that doesn't want to accept that we can make such a mistake. So if we say, I am just a, I am just a person who is prone to make mistakes and I can make that mistake. It's me that doesn't want, me meaning the I, the ego, that says, you are better than this. Better than what? Nobody is better. We're all just servants. We're all just... Nada, you know, <laughs> the goodness is from God anyways, we're not good. Our goodness is from God. So when we think we are good and then we do something bad, we are like, I am so good, I can't do this. So here this, the problem is, I am not good anyways, because this goodness that was in me, I stole it from God. It was the goodness of God that was reflecting on me. That is, and now, but when I realize maybe God wants to, Teach me to give back what is his to him. And maybe that's why I am still doing that mistake all, all over again. I couldn't pass it by. So he is out of his love. He's letting me do it and do it and do it. But when I, oh, yes, I can do it. That's why sometimes, you know, it's great. There is groups of uh, like addiction groups. They're wonderful. One of the... Very important part of it is that part of these steps is accepting that I, I cannot do it. I am an addict and I cannot do it. And in a way, we, can all, we are all addicts of our own mistakes. We don't have to be an addict of a certain substance. We can be an addict of our ego's love of showing itself or, or you know, whatever it is. And the moment we realize, God, I think I am actually... I do this all the time, and I need you to, I'm coming back to you because you are the only one that can forgive me for this. Then, it, it, so the whole thing starts with that. It's the humility of that recognition, I think. Um, a great uh, point. So, um, past does not have power over us. Sin does not have power over us. Only God does. That recognition is the gist of the prayer that we, the Prophet Muhammad taught us in the beginning is to remember that when I have despair from God's forgiveness, I am actually not recognizing who God is. And in another saying of Prophet Muhammad, it's said in the meaning of uh, despair is like unbelief. Because what is despair? Despair is saying that no one can help me and I am a lost case. It means, I'm saying basically, there is no God powerful enough that can change my situation. I've lost hope from God. So basically saying God is not enough. God is not infinite. God is not eternal. God is not boundless. Uh, 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 love that is waiting for me to come back. Basically, that's what I'm saying when I'm having a feeling of despair. And now we can say, you know, I can feel like, oh, I have some feelings of despair. Now I feel bad about myself. Well, there is, a, there is a solution to this. We can just remember again, God, feeling of despair is also a sin, actually. He's, he's not remembering you. I am asking for forgiveness from all of my thoughts that for some reason... Let me be away from you. The not recognizing your, your boundless love. See, it's very interesting. We say, I seek forgiveness from God. Who is from, from uh, I, I, I seek forgiveness from God. Then from what is the, from Satan, basically, right? From, from Satan's, from Satan that is, a, a cursed, in a way, actually, the meaning of a regime, it's very interesting, regime and rahim. Regime is the opposite of rahim. It means devoid of any compassion. It means that when I don't see God's mercy, I am in the pathway of Satan. 
So here I am seeking refuge from the part of me that follows that thought, which is not seeing God's mercy. And what, what do then we say after we seek refuge? We say, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. I want to do everything with the name of God, the infinite merciful, infinite loving, the all compassionate one. So here is it again. It's the same, uh, same uh, thing. So what is the secret? Yes, yes. So what is then the secret? Secret is that asking for forgiveness is the ticket. It's the immediate button, actually, I should say, to peace and happiness. Because it relieves you at the very moment. It's, it's there to relieve you and to turn you back to boundless uh, compassion again, to feel again God's mercy and to feel his peace, that he is a salam, his peace, and he's waiting for you to come back to him. But because we don't do it. So here in this verse, interestingly, says, God says, Ask your sustainer for forgiveness, then turn back to him. He will grant you wholesome enjoyment until appointed time. So as for forgiveness, you will get wholesome enjoyment. Because every moment you slip, you say, Oh, it's time to remember again. God, you are perfect. I need you in my life. That was the... That was the reason, that was the wisdom in me slipping. To come back to God and realize His sweetness, how He's waiting for us. So, it is to be in a continuous state of forgiveness. It means not giving opportunity to the ego to take over any moment. Because what does the ego say? Let's say I make a mistake. Oh, I know. I am, I am so bad. I feel so guilty. I don't know what to do with myself. I am so... Okay, what happened now? For the next two, three, four, five hours you, I live in until I remember that God is compassionate and he's waiting for me to, to wipe this out. I live in this darkness. But if I say... What should I do to recompense? Uh, say, I, I, maybe I did something wrong for this person. Oh, just, just take this, and you feel you feel relieved. You feel like you are positive again. But because the ego wants to get hold of you and say, "See, see, I told you we are bad," because it wants to remind us of the shadow, then continuous forgiving is actually not giving any oxygen for our ego. It's actually killing it. Because the ego survives through that part of us. That's one of it, part, its, its parts. Uh, uh, and I want to end with this uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, prayer of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, where he says, he says actually, this is the chief of prayers. It's chief of actually, no, Sayyidul Istighfar, chief of the prayers for forgiveness. And it goes very interesting. So he says, O oh God, you are my sustainer. 
There are no gods except you. You created me and I am your servant. And I abide to your covenant and promise to honor it as best as I can. I take refuge in you from the evil of which I committed. I acknowledge your favor upon me and I acknowledge my sin. So forgive me, for verily, none can forgive sins except you. So this saying, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that if somebody recites it during the day with firm faith and, and dies on the same day before the evening, he will be from the people of paradise. And if somebody recites it in, at night with firm faith, in it, firm faith in it, in this prayer, and dies before the morning, he will be from people of paradise. Basically, it's a transforming agent. It's interesting when we look at it. So what we are saying, basically, we are reminding ourselves again of the light of the heavens and the earth. Oh God, you are the sustainer. And I am seeing that there are no partners, no gods but you. My past, my ego, not, none of them have had, they have, none of them has any power on me. Only you have power. I am reminding myself of, of that. You created me and I am your servant. I have sincerely wanting to uh, follow this covenant that I am your servant, but I make mistakes. So I am taking refuge from the part in me that makes mistakes, and I acknowledge it, but I know that I, this acknowledgement, this sins that I do, you are the one can forgive, because you only can forgive. Forgiveness is really from coming only from the true forgiver, from the one who can forgive sins. So coming back to, and it, so the Prophet Muhammad is here is saying, if you believe in it, because he wants us to not just say it, he wants us to, to recognize what we are saying, because we don't believe what we are saying. Say, really? So if I say this, I am like, really? You see, this is our problem. We don't realize the miracle that the faith is offering us, that this can transform us in a minute, minute. Oh no, it can't transform me, can it? No, I did so bad. I still, I have to be guilty for 50 hours. And, and go to my bed and close and say, oh, I am, I am so bad, I want to kill myself. Oh, I feel so suicidal, I don't want to see anybody because I am the worst per person in the world. Why? Because my ego was shattered. Well, guess what? It, it's good that it was shattered. Just say, recognize it. God, I make mistakes and I'm turning back to you. I'm not letting the part in me that makes mistakes take over me. I want you to take over. Take over me because this part in me, it wants to take over. It wants to take over and return my life to a hell. God, I'm taking refuge from that part in me. This is basically what we are saying. We are, we are uh, running away from our, uh, that part of us, basically, who wants to take over. Inshallah, maybe we can stop here because of time. Uh, uh, Jean, would you like to make any prayers?